Well, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests. Uh, I'm glad that Garth mentioned that this is a celebration, because it is. It's been 20 years. It's been a wonderful journey for all of us involved, and I really thank you all for showing your support and being here tonight. Um, tonight, uh, we're launching a Laurie Cunningham Award, which has been awarded to Laurie posthumously, and then before um, going forward, to an individual every year who's made an outstanding contribution to tackling all forms of discrimination in football. Um, before we get on to that, I'm really sorry to say that uh, Louise Ansari uh, was taken ill and had to go home. We wish, that, wish her well and hope she has a, a good recovery. But going back to 20 years ago, uh, it was a really fantastic event in my life, really, because uh, I hadn't heard of Home Loosely before then. He was playing all Herman. Uh, now he's Lord Oosley, and I think um, uh, it's well deserved for the work he's done in tackling uh, racism. But he sent his researcher, Louis Ansari, to see me uh, in my office in Manchester uh, when I was with the PFA. Uh, this young lady walked into my room and said, I work with um, Herman Oosley, new chairman of the, um, or the CEO of the CRE. He has got an idea of tackling racism using football as the bit of a battering ram. And it was like a light bulb moment to me. And I thought, bloody hell, I wish I'd have thought about this. I said, don't move, I'll be back in two minutes. I went in to see Gordon in his office, told Gordon very briefly what it was about. He said, what do you think? I said, Gordon, we've got to go for it. He said, right, pick it up, let me know how it's going to develop. Went back to Louis Ansari and I said, we must make sure that this isn't a one-off. It isn't for one year, it's got to be more than that. And here we are 20 years later, it is just as relevant, but as Garth said, it's a celebration. For somebody like myself, a boy who came from Grenada, the most beautiful island in the Caribbean, if you want to go there, we need the dollars and we need the pounds. Um, some people might disagree, but what the hell. Um, never seen football until I came to England as a nine-year-old. And football has been my life. And when I signed as a 16-year-old at Arsenal, and I started to make my way tentatively in the game. For a long time, I was the only black player playing. For a long time, a long, long time, you saw all the graffiti on the walls of football clubs. For a long time, you saw the national front being present as you got off at Chelsea, at Newcastle, at all the grounds up and down the country. For a long time, we haven't been honest thrown at us. That's in the past. And this journey has been a celebration because I think the improvements that have been made are beyond my expectations, really they are. And to see people who have been part of that journey for so long is fantastic. Herman has mentioned them all, and I won't embarrass them by trying to mention more, but all those people in this room know who you are, and it's a real pleasure for someone like myself to see the support we've had over those 20 years. Um, Laurie Cunningham. I saw Laurie play as a 14, 15 year old at Brisbane Road. I was at Clyde Best, it was just very random. We happened to meet together, there's a youth team game going on, and I saw Laurie play as a 40, 15 year old. I remember saying to Clyde Best, I think he's gonna be a good player, this lad. I was totally wrong. He turned out to be a great player. We miss him, he'll, he'll be forever 33, Laurie. A tremendous individual, great lad. He was a bit of an introvert off the pitch, but on the pitch, he was an extrovert. The game that sold him to Real Madrid in 1978, we were playing in the UEFA, in the, um, uh, UEFA Cup um, against, Real, against uh, Valencia. That 19 minutes must have been the worst 19 minutes for the fullbacks of Valencia. And I remember thinking to myself, thank goodness I'm not marking Laurie Cunningham tonight. That sold him to Real Madrid for just under a million pounds. He went and made his mark there. Sadly, he was killed. It's 25 years this year. Laurie passed away. We miss him, but the mark he left on his game will last forever. A wonderful player. Um, we have Tony Duggan with us tonight, not only an England striker, but also an ambassador for Kick It Out. And I'd like her to pass over to Cyril to, uh, and then say a few words about Laurie. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I first met Laurie making my debut in 1977. Laurie was already at West Bromwich Albion Football Club, uh, a, a regular and uh, play on his trade. I was making my debut against Rotherham and he was in the dressing room and he helped me through those early years. His presence, his friendship, uh, his encouragement and advice of how to deal with some of the racism and some of the uh, calls and chants at us. Like, like uh, Garth was saying, it made you angry. But we internalize that anger and we use it as motivation to go out there and win the, win the game with our teammates and says, this is it. We've got something to fight against and we had our talent. When Brendan came along, we had the three degrees so forth. It was a tremendous time to, to play. There was hardly any black players in the first division. There was myself, Laurie and Brendan, and Viv Anderson at Notts Forest. The contrast and the land, landscape of football has changed where now we've got 35% black players playing in the Premiership. Absolutely fantastic. But Laurie was the benchmark. You've just seen this game against uh, Man United, a 5-3 game where everybody remembers uh, what a fantastic team I was privileged to play in. But Laurie was the star. He was so balletic, he had so much grace, he had so much style. And looking back a couple of days ago when a documentary was made about him. Looking back at his, his movements, his foot movements, was just what a wonderful play to watch and what a wonderful play to play with. But his legacy will be, I would say one word, inspirational. Inspirational because he inspired the second and third generation of black players. Because when they saw Laurie Cunningham out there in the snow, in the rain, getting kicked, playing a style of football, they said, if he can do it, I can do it. A tremendous legacy and a wonderful person. Thank you very much.